praise. Praise. Hallelujah. 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 It is good to praise the name of the Lord our God. Amen, church? Amen. And uh, if that is our desire, we come to the right place. Amen? Indeed, it is good to praise the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, it's an honor and privilege to have uh, young Joshua and young Joy with us worshiping this afternoon. Amen. We welcome uh, Sister Blessy coming back from the US of A. Amen. And also, welcome back Doc Eman. Uh, Doc Eman is uh, here again this uh, Sunday and next Sunday, Doc, yeah? Hallelujah. And of course, welcome each and everyone. Indeed, it is good to praise the name of the Lord our God, especially where two or three are gathered. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Um, can I invite each and everyone to stand up as we welcome the word of the Lord? Praise the Lord. Oh, we have uh, a friend as well. Um, Scott. Scott. Okay. And uh, who is Scott? Welcome, welcome. Who is Scott, um, uh, Tish, and David? We just saw this gentleman come in and it was wrong for worship. Okay. All right. Okay. Welcome. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Hallelujah. Okay. If you have your Bibles, let us open in the book of Romans, the letter of Apostle Paul to the Romans. Hallelujah. Chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Are you all there? Or boys, are you there? Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out His love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit in whom He has given us. Let us pray. Our most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you very much because in spite of the chaos and unrest that is happening all around us, thank you that in you, O Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ, we have peace. And thank you very much, O Lord, because it is for that peace that we are able to gather in your house this afternoon. Lord, it is our prayer that as we gather, may the fullness of your grace and glory be manifested in our midst. Thank you very much for allowing us to offer the sacrifice of praises and worship through our lips. And equally, we thank you very much as we say, Lord, open our hearts, open our minds, open our spiritual senses, that we may receive all the message that you have prepared for us this afternoon. Lord, give us an expectant heart. Give us that excitement, knowing and believing, Lord, that your message is for us. 
for each and every one that your message is for me. And I know and I do believe because your message is for me that, Father, I am excited on what you are going to do with this message in my life, in our life collectively. Lord, we take authority over all the works of the enemy and we bind, we rebuke whatever it is that will hinder us in receiving your full measure this afternoon. Father, cover your servant behind you. Hide your servant, O Lord God, behind you. Cause it, O Lord God, that it is not me, it is not this person that my brothers and sisters, including people online, will, uh, won't just be mere staring at. But Lord, the message, Father God, that you want, O Lord, this simple man, Father, to deliver. I am just a mouthpiece. I am just an instrument, Lord. None of this, Lord, is a conveyance of whatever it is that my personal thoughts, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, church, can we give the Lord the best clap offering that we can give Him this afternoon? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I know you have been uh, engaged in worship. You have been engaged in praising the Lord. I know that you have been enjoying those wonderful songs. But it is quite obvious that the message of the song is... What is the message? Trust. What is the message of that song? Trust. That message of that song is not worrying. Amen, church? Not worrying. And I know and I do believe that as a mere human, as a human being, from here to there, from here to there, each and every one of us, well, suppose, have a worry, have a thing or two to be worrying about. Look at what is happening around us. Church, look at what is happening around us. Look at what is happening the last two weeks. Initially, when we heard the news, initially, when we uh, tuned in the news, we thought that it was only happening in far, far community. But this week, it came to our community. Amen. The unrest, the disorder. Everything, my dear brothers and sisters, it is actually more than that. If you are keen, if you are actually interested on what is happening in the world stage as well, my dear brothers and sisters, there are a lot of things happening worse than what it is that we are experiencing in our local community. Amen, church. I do not have to nominate a newspaper. I do not have to nominate an article. If you like, let us open our Bible in Matthew chapter 24. It has been written all over it, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Those warning that is happening around, whether be natural or man-made, they are all written in the word of the Lord. Amen. Matthew chapter 24, it just in summary, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus himself said, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and they will deceive many. Amen? You will hear of wars and rumors of war. Amen? I will jump out from that next. Such thing must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. There will be earthquakes in various places. And all of these are the beginning of birth pains. You will be handed over to be persecuted. And put to death. 
And you will be hated by all nations because of me. All the time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear, deceiving many people. There will be increase of wickedness. That's the reason why that all of this happening. Whatever it is that they say, the reason that they are doing what they are doing, but it is simply because there is an increase of wickedness. As wickedness increase, the love will grow cold. They cannot increase together. Amen, church. As wickedness increase, the love will grow cold. Amen. But the message of the Lord here is, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Amen. So if you are reading this Matthew chapter 24, they have all been manifested. And they are still continuing to be manifested, my dear brothers and sisters. And if you are in the middle of all this manifestation, what will come to you? What will come to your mind? What will come to your heart? It's natural to worry. It's a human nature to worry. Amen, church? It is natural to worry. It is natural. It is a human nature to worry. The children this week, for some reason, became more concerned, if you like. Before, they do not care what time you come home. But now, if you supposedly, or dad is ma and mom is not yet here yet, they give you a ring. Are you okay? And you, are you on the way home? Because of worry. Amen, church. Because of worry. But, what is the word that we left out in there? Jesus himself said, See to it that you are not alarmed. Amen. See to it that you are not alarmed. Yes, all of this, all of what is happening around us, all that is being described and being manifested in Matthew chapter 24 is a good enough reason for one to worry. But what Jesus Christ is telling us is, make sure that you do not worry. Amen, church. Say if you like the title of our message as we are talking another message about end times is do not worry. Amen, church? Why don't you tell your neighbor? Why don't you remind yourself? Do not worry. Amen, church? Amen. Oh, how come? How come that we will not be worrying? Both of us know what is happening around. How come? Why? Why we do not have to worry? Because the word of the Lord says, we do not have to worry because verse 1, we have peace with God. Amen, Amen church. We do not have to worry. We should not be worrying because we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen, church. Do you know that worry and peace cannot exist together? Amen. Worry and peace cannot exist together. One exists where the second one ceases. Amen, church. Worry and peace cannot exist together. Worry is the absence of peace. Peace is the absence of worry. Amen. But because the Bible says that we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Meaning, my dear brothers and sisters, whatever you think is a valid reason to be worried about, they are all scrapped. Amen. They are all scrapped. Whatever it is that you think, whatever it is that we may feel, that is a valid reason to be worried about, 
They are all scrap. They are all rendered moot and void. Amen. Because through Jesus, He gave us peace with God. Amen, church. Amen. Through Jesus, we have peace with God. Oh, what about famine? What about earthquakes? What about this looming war? What about this happening unrest in our community? Yes, all of them. It's not a valid reason to be worried if you are in Christ. Not even, Jesus said, not even if you live in the middle of these signs. Because Jesus said, do not be alarmed. Amen, church. Do not be alarmed. The message of Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 39, says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, no trouble, no calamity, no persecution, no hunger, no destitute, no danger, no death, nor life, angels, demons, troubles today, or worries of tomorrow, no power in the sky above, nor power in earth below, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and the peace that is with Him. Amen, church? Nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in the peace that Jesus Christ provided for it in the cross. Amen, church? How come? How do we have peace? Amen. How come? How do we have peace? How can we have peace? Amen. Would it even be possible? that you are in the middle of this severity? Is it even possible that you are in the middle of this chaos? And yet, the message is about peace. Is it possible, my dear brothers and sisters? Thank you very much for turning up, brother. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay, let's continue. Amen. How do we have peace? How do we have peace in the middle of this chaos? In the middle of this severity? Is it even possible? I tell you what. You are right. It is not possible. How could it be possible to be at peace? How could it be possible not to worry, not to be alarmed in the middle of this severity? In the middle of this chaos? Even if you ask your mom, even if you ask your dad, you yourself probably an elder of us, and you will say that it is not possible, and I agree with you. It is not possible. That is the reason why Christ made it possible. Amen, church. Because if we are to rely on our own capability, if we are to rely on our own understanding, it is impossible, my dear brothers and sisters. There is no way that it will be possible. But it is only possible through Christ. Amen, church. We cannot have this peace in our own. Amen. Even if you go and run to, to live in Finland, you know where, what Finland is? Finland is considered the happiest place on earth. Amen. That's what Finland is called, it is called the happiest place on earth. Even if you run into Finland, or even if you dig the deepest bunker and 
probably isolate yourself inside, away from all these toxic people. Even probably, my dear brothers and sisters, if you try to, to make yourself happy, try to vow to yourself that you will make yourself the happiest, it's impossible to be at peace without Christ. Amen. Do you want to know where you can go where the most peaceful is? Do you want, you want to be at peace? You want to know where the most peaceful place is in the middle of this tribulation? Do you want to know where to run in order for you to be safe? Enter into the presence of God. Amen. This building cannot protect you. This building cannot make you peaceful. Be at peace. Your brother next to you, your sister next to you cannot give you peace. But the most peaceful place on earth, the most peaceful situation on earth is where the presence of God is. Amen, church. You may be in the middle of the desert. You may be in the middle of the mountain. You may be in the midst of alder shot. But if you are in the presence of the Lord, then that is your safest place. Amen, church. That is your safest place. Jesus said, Matthew 10, 28, Do not fear the one yet he can destroy your body, but cannot kill your soul. But fear him, brother, who can destroy both your soul and your body in hell. Amen. And this is where the Lord said, You know, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ allowed us Peace with the Father through His justifying us. Amen. The Lord justifying us means that, you know all those reasons for us to worry? The Lord said, I took them away anymore. All those sins, all those shortcomings, all those overgoings that we have committed that lead us into worrying Christ said, I have justified you already. I have taken away all those reasons for you to be worrying already. So it is therefore Christ is telling to the believers that I am the one who has the power to destroy your soul and your life and hell. So you must fear me. But Jesus said, I have already justified you on all the reasons to fear. Therefore, you do not have to fear. No worry, no fear. Amen, church. Amen. Because of Christ justifying us, there is no reason anymore to be worried. Amen. Amen, church. Because Christ justifying us, we can sleep at peace in the middle of this end times manifestation. Amen. We can sleep at peace even if we are traveling in the train, we are traveling in the bus, disregarding come what may of what chaos will come. Because Jesus Christ justified us, we know and we do believe that yes, chaos are around, yes, this chaos might harm and destroy us physically. But what can it do to our soul? Amen. What can it do to our soul? It cannot destroy our soul. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Therefore, do not worry. Amen. Do not worry. The Bible said, rather rejoice in hope for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Not only that we rejoice in hope for the glory of God, you know, when you are justified, you should not be worried anymore because those worried, what they do is to disturb you on what you ought to be doing. That is 
living in hope for that glory that is to be revealed. Amen, church. In the middle of end times, with the talk about all the signs, people, scholar, Christians alike, there is a battle of theology who can interpret the most during these end times that actually takes them away. The message of end times is not a battle of who can interpret the signs. The message of the end times is it's all the more live in hope for that glory that is to come. Amen, church. Live in hope for that glory that is to come. Amen. And it says in there, not only that we rejoice in hope for the glory of the Lord, but we also rejoice in the coming tribulation. Amen, church. We rejoice in hope in the coming tribulation. Nothing for us to worry about. Not even this tribulation that is to come. Not even in these end times that we are standing. Amen, church. Amen. You know, look, look around. In the midst of the chaos that is happening, uh, the people, they have the opportunity to go and enjoy the sunshine in the beach the other day. Amen. In the midst of all this chaos and tribulations happening around, isn't it as a human nature, we enjoy sunshine, we enjoy the joy, we enjoy the peace, we enjoy the happiness, we enjoy all the good things in life. Am I right, my dear brothers and sisters? Amen? If everything is happening, if everything is happening according to how we plan it, if everything is happening according to how we desire it, wow, we are at peace. We are not worrying at all. But when chaos comes, when trial comes, when problem comes, when challenges comes, my dear brothers and sisters, when difficulty comes, what do we do? We are quick to step back and say, hold on. I did not sign up for this. Hold on. Let me think twice. Amen. Hold on. Like what I have said last time. Everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Hold on. I don't want hardship. I don't want difficulties. But sadly, my dear brothers and sisters, are we all Christians in this place? Yeah? We are all believers. Amen. We all gave our life to the Lord. Amen, church. And with that, my dear brothers and sisters, tribulation, difficulty, persecution comes with it. Worrying times comes with it. Amen, church. And if they come, don't throw the towel. Don't surrender. Don't step back, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't. We were given the story in the parable of the sower. What is that parable of the sower? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 20 and 21, there are types of soil. And one of the seed is scattered. It says in there, the seed that fell on the rocky soil represent those, pay attention, who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. Amen. Because to be honest, what is there not to like in the word of the Lord? Amen. Everyone who will hear the word of the Lord for the first time, they enjoy it. They like it. It filled with love story. It is filled with history. It is filled with miracle, extraordinary stories. Amen, church. 
It is a story of goodness winning against evil. Who does not want that story? Amen. Everyone who hears the word of God enjoys it, welcome it. But it comes a difference when the caveat says that, you know what? You do not just have to listen to this story and enjoy it, you know? You must be a part of the story as well. You do not only listen to the story and rejoice with it. You do not only hear what is being said. You have to live it. You have to follow it. Amen, church? That is where the difference comes. Amen. That is where the difference comes. The ten le lepers, they all want to receive healing. Amen. Who does not want to receive healing? What when, but when they know that they have to go back and say thank you, when they know that they have to go back and show appreciation to the Lord, when they know and to show the praise to the Lord, nine of them did not matter, did not bother. Only one of them did. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, the seed that fell on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have a deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or persecutions for believing God's word. Amen, church. Let us not be that person. Amen. Let us not be that person that just simply enjoy the word and enjoy the story about Christ. Jesus said to the people, Jesus said to the believers in John chapter 8, he is talking to the believers. He's not talking to the unbeliever. Jesus was talking to the believers that time. And he said, If you truly are my disciple, live the word. Amen. Follow what is written in the word. Amen, church. The word of the Lord says, Judgment will come first to the house of God. Amen. Judgment will come first to the house of God. Amen. Before we look at outside how pity those people outside are, we have to look what is happening in here first. Because the judgment of the Lord will come first to his house. Amen, church. In 1 Peter chapter 6, verse 1, chapter 6, uh, chapter 1, verse 6 to 7, it says in here, In all this you greatly rejoice, though for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. This have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of which greater worth than gold. Gold perishes. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters, if it is refined by fire. Amen. But our faith, my dear brothers and sisters, which is more precious than gold, must also be subjected to the fire to be refined. Amen. So that this faith that we claim to profess may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus is revealed. Amen, church? Amen. Who are people here who claim to be people of faith? And we ought to be our. Amen, church? But in order for us to say that we are a people of faith, in order for us to say that, oh, we have a strong faith, that faith must have to go through test, trial. Amen. If someone comes to you selling gold, amen, 
you do not just take them for their word. You, they must have to show proof of test. Amen. They must have to prove papers to prove that that is indeed gold. Amen, church. So same thing with our faith, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. So really, my dear brothers and sisters, the real test of our conversion, the real test of our faith, my dear brothers and sisters, is through trials. There is no other way. There is no other way. You cannot claim to be a mature Christian. You cannot claim to be a Christian without going through the test, going through the trial. Not only going through it, persevering in overcoming it. Amen, church. The test of faith is not how long you sat on those very chairs every Sunday. The test of faith is how many years you are a Christian, how many years you are professing faith. The test of faith is through the trials that you have gone through and you endure and you overcome. Amen, church. It's even absurd to say that, oh, God must really be, um, uh, God must really um, be impressed with my faith. Because he is not giving me any trials at all. It does not work that way. It does not work that way. Amen, church. The real test of our faith are hardship, trials, tribulations. You name it, my dear brothers and sisters. You name it, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. John 16.33, Jesus said, favorite verse, memory verse, that yes, here in this earth, you will experience trials. In this earth, you will have tribulations. Amen, church. But again, let us be peaceful in the middle of these trials and tribulations because Christ, in whom we profess our faith, has overcome all those. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Christ has overcome all those. So I encourage us all, my dear brothers and sisters, let us all pay attention to this and put this in our very heart. In Matthew chapter 14, take note. If you have read it before, you will remember. In Matthew chapter 14, on one occasion, this is the time when Jesus Christ fed the multitudes. Okay, remember now? And after that victory, after feeding the multitude, Jesus said, let us go to the other side of the sea, the Sea of Galilee. Amen. And Jesus Christ said to his disciples, go ahead. And Jesus Christ climbed up the mountain. Amen. That's why Jesus said, yeah, go ahead, I will follow you. But Jesus, little did they know that Jesus spent hours and hours praying, fellowshipping, praising in the mountain that when he finished, the boat is actually in the middle of the sea now. Amen. Amen. And sometimes that's what happens if you are so engrafted in the presence of God. Everything else do not matter. Amen. Amen, church. That's what peace is. Amen. Jesus did not worry that, oh, I said to the disciples that I will be quick, that they probably will be leaving soon. Uh, probably I cannot swim where they are now. They are now in the middle. I forgot my phone. I cannot call them back. I have to walk all over around it. No. He was in the presence of God. Nothing else matter. He was at peace in the presence of God without realizing he spent hours and hours and hours in there. And that is the cue. That is the lesson there, my dear brothers and sisters. 
You see the news. You see your phone, every chaos that is happening. You hear every story of the chaos what is happening. You witness every chaos that is happening and you are in a worry because you know why? You have plenty of time to observe all this. But if you are in the presence of the Lord, none of this matters. Amen, church. Amen. So the disciples went, they were in the middle of the sea. And what happened? All of a sudden, waves, typhoon, natural calamity, my dear brothers and sisters, is challenging the boat to the point that the disciples said, this is our demise. We will drown. We will be a shipwreck. We will die. Amen, church. And little did they know that Jesus was coming. Amen, church. Why don't you tell your people? Why don't you tell people next to you? Whatever your situation is, Jesus is coming. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming. And He is not only coming. He is coming soon. Amen, church. You know, when the disciples saw Jesus coming, what did they say? Oh, help us. It's a ghost. Amen. Because they are in the middle of the sea with all the typhoon around. It is dark and there is a figure walking towards them. And they said, oh, it's ghost. But my dear brothers and sisters, again, if you put our situation in this situation at current times, However challenging the world is around us, however dark this world is around us, have faith, hold on to your faith. Jesus is coming. Amen. Amen. He did not left out the apostles during that time. And he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Jesus who did not left out those apostles that time is the same Jesus who will not leave your side in your current situation. Amen, church. Jesus will not abandon you in your current situation. He is coming to your aid. He is coming to this world aid. And He is coming soon, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. This generation that we are living in, this chaos that is happening around us, this disorder that is happening around us, you know, not only here, even in the political arena, Amen, church? Our communities are so fractured. Even in the coalition of nations, United Nations, they cannot agree what to do. My dear brothers and sisters, there is chaos everywhere. But the God of peace, who is peace himself, is coming soon. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. And when he comes, no one can stop him bringing the peace that is with him. Amen, church. People might not welcome it. People might not desire it. People might have a different idea. But no one can stop it. Jesus is coming soon. Amen, church. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus will not leave you alone in that situation to drown. Jesus will not leave you alone in that situation to be perished, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. To this unbelieving world, they have all the reason to worry. But for us, that through Jesus Christ, he has given us 
peace with God. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So again, like last time I said, it's another message about end times. The message of end times is not about knowing the signs. The message of end times is not about accurately interpreting the signs to confirm that with many theologies, we are right. That's not the message of end times. The message of end times, even it is a cause to worry, but the message of end times is for us not to worry. Amen. Like what we've said last time, the message of end times is about preparation. Amen. It's about preparation. Have you prepared yet? If you do, then glory to God in the highest. Amen. If you are not yet, then we have a time to prepare. Amen. Like what we've said, the reason that Jesus did not came yesterday, last week, or last year, is so that we can prepare. Amen, church. You are the reason that Jesus did not came last week. Because He is giving us chance to prepare. Amen, church. The message of the end times is preparation. And to give us time to solidify our faith. Amen, church. Nothing is more concerning, nothing is more worrying that this, than this Matthew chapter 24 that is coming. Because this Matthew chapter 24, it says in there, it will come a time that is unparalleled. Amen. I live. I was alive in the earthquake 1990 in the Philippines. That was the strongest earthquake to date in the history of the Philippines. And it was so concerning. It was so alarming. Amen, church. Many of people that we have the privilege to know, they have encountered war in those war-torn country and places. And nothing is more alarming. But there is gonna be a time, the Bible said, that it is so severe that it was, it is unparalleled. It is not even comparable to the flood during the time of Noah. It is not even comparable when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It is so severe. Something to worry about. But my dear brothers and sisters, that's not why this, the Lord sent these signs in order for us to prepare. Amen, church? Amen. And we will not be able to prepare without self-realization. Amen? Whoever you are, the end times is not only for people who have their faith secured. Amen? If your faith is secured, then maintain it. If you are yet to come to faith with the Lord, then do not delay. Amen, church? Matthew chapter 24, 20. Pray that your flight is not gonna be in winter or Sabbath. If you once profess your faith in the Lord and you realize that you backslide, and you realize that you were not on the level where you were before. Jesus said, pray that my coming is not during winter. Winter meaning, nanlalamig ang ating pananampalataya. Our faith is cold. Amen. Pray that it's not gonna be on Sabbath. What does people do on Sabbath? They are resting. Amen, church. And sometimes, our faith rests as well. 
just imagine that, my dear brothers and sisters. You have the most exemplary Christian from Sunday to Friday. And you rested on Sabbath and Jesus came. Kaputs. Amen. You brought the most prettiest lamp. You dress the best dress among all to go and meet the Lord. And yet, the oil in your lamp is only good for six days. There is seven days in a week. Amen, church. Again, the message of end times, if you remain in faith, I encourage you to continue. Persevere. If you are not yet in faith, this is not the reason anymore to wait for next week. There is no reason anymore to wait for next year. My dear brothers and sisters, I'll tell you this and I'll tell you the reality of things. If God is not true, people online, if God is not true, if we are delusional, like other people say we are, yeah, many people say, oh, those Christians, they are delusional. There is no such thing as God. If God is not true, and we all die, nothing harm done, we will all go to the same place. Amen. If God is not true, and we all died, nothing harm done. But if God is true, of which that's what we believe in, and we both perish, are you willing to gamble? Are you willing to gamble, my dear brothers and sisters? That's why the message of in end times is, it's not a scaremongering. It's not who the best interpreter of these signs are. The message of the end times is, if you are a believer, persevere, remain in faith. If you are not yet a believer, and you are in the company of the believers, that's why the Lord put you there, so that you too can become a believer as well. If you are not yet a believer, my dear brothers and sisters, no time to waste. If you were once a believer before, and you step back, and you have become cold, your faith experiencing winter or Sabbath, my dear brothers and sisters, come back to the Lord. Return to the Lord. Amen, church. Amen. The message of the end times is to prepare us for that final trumpet call. Final trumpet call the gathering, my dear brothers and sisters, of all the believers. What happened when all the believers gather? We rejoice. Because the hope of today is reality. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Isn't it? Someone who is going on a date. We all experience this. Both men and women alike. If you are going for a date, you are preparing for that date. You are waiting in the place where you agree a lot of butterflies in your stomach. Amen. And you hope, you hope, oh, what time are they coming? I hope that they turn up soon. Amen. And when they turn up soon, that hope becomes reality. Amen, church. At the moment, we have that hope, we have that hope, we have that hope of the glory that is to be revealed. Amen, church. But there will come a day that we will stop hoping because it has become a reality. Amen. That is the message of end times. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. And that is the reason why that the Lord is allowing us to hear this message now, so that the Lord said, do not just turn up empty, do not just turn up alone. Can you bring your neighbor? 
Can you bring your mom? Can you bring your sister, your brother, your wife, your husband? Can you bring them with you as well? Amen, church. That is the duty of a believer. Amen. That is our duty. 2 Peter 3.8 the, the reason that the Lord did not came yesterday is because He is patient with us. He does not want us he does not want anyone to be destroyed. He does not want anyone not to be saved. He does not want anyone to be given chance for repentance. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Do we believe that we are in the end times? So we continue to have that hope of that glory that is to be revealed. Amen, church. But as we continue to hope and covet for that glory, look around us. Look around us. Look around us. Amen. If you are inside your house and the house is burning, yes, you have a duty to go out as soon as, but what do we do? We grab as much as we can. Amen. Amen, church. We grab as much as we can. Amen. Oh, my, my cell phone, all my checkbook, my bank book, my passbook. We grab as much as we can. That is happening. We are in end times. That gate is becoming narrower and narrower and it's going to shut us out. We have to rush in going out, but in the way out, let's grab brother, let's grab sister, let's grab mom, let's grab dad, brother, sister, aunt, neighbor. Amen, church. Even the dog of the neighbor. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us welcome back the music team, my dear brothers and sisters. And... Let us talk to the Lord. And let the Lord complete His message through His song. Yung first song natin before... Ano. Hallelujah. Let us all stand up, church. Again, if none of those words were powerful enough, if none of those words sunk in, if we are the type of person that we do not really need or enjoy a messenger or emissary, we can come to the Lord personally and directly. So, I encourage us that as the music team led us in this song, in this worship. This can be our prayer as well. Let's open our heart. Let's open our mind. Let us be receptive. And if it is not too much, why don't we utter a few praises to the Lord and say that Lord, what is your message to me? Lord, what it is, what is it that you want me to hear? Lord, I mean it. I have a great interest of who you are of knowing who you are? Would you speak to me? Would you? Would you take away anything that bothers me? Would you take any hindrances that hinders me in receiving fully from you? All the disturbance and distractions I just want to simply hear what is the truth about you.
Church, let's apply self-realization to our situation. The Lord knows we cannot hide anything from Him. The Lord knows who you are. Your very desire. The, the Lord knows your fear. The Lord knows what is holding you back. The Lord knows your worries. The Lord knows what you are going through right now. And my dear brothers and sisters, through His words, He is here saying, there is no reason to be worried anymore. I have given you peace with the Father through His justification. The Lord knows your needs and He has given it and provided for it in the cross before the actual time of need comes. Come on, people of God. Call upon the Lord with confidence, with trust, with surrender. church. It's a declaration of confidence to the Lord. We may have no reason to be confident, but Jesus provided Himself a good enough reason to be confident in the presence of our God.
will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. Oh. Oh. My dear brothers and sisters, why don't we apply self-realization to heart? We know our needs. We know our situation. We know our difficulties. We know all the reasons that may challenge our faith. But the good thing is, we know as well that Jesus, our Savior and Master, will not abandon us. We know as well that Jesus, our Savior and Master, has provided for peace for us. It's just really an application to learning. Saying that, Lord, because I am in this situation, I am going to do the remaining steps. You have done the first move, O God. You have given the life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, why don't you allow me to do the following steps. Come near me as I come near you, the Lord Jesus said. Up until now, you have not asked anything in my name, Jesus said. Ask anything in my name so that I may do it because it is in the Father's glory that I will do these things that you will ask in my name. My dear brothers and sisters, the moment that you receive, that you accepted the Lord as your Savior and Master, the Word says, and He has made us seated with Him in the heavenly realms. Let us put self-realization to heart. If you are really fully convinced that you are in a right and proper and good standing with the Lord, if you are at the peak of your faith, fully convinced that you are in the right standing with God, then the message of the Lord to you, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, is all the more continue in an increasing measure. If you are the one who did not yet submit your life to the Lord. If you are the one that you are yet to fully commit and surrender your life to the Lord, the message today is, as you hear these words, do not harden your hearts. Because hardening your hearts, the Lord constitute it, class it as a rebellion. Amen. So if you are yet to surrender and submit to the Lord, apply self-realization. Do not delay. Do not think twice. Right here, right now, 
Just say to the Lord, Lord, I want to submit and surrender my life unto you. Lord, according to your words, with whole heart and conviction, I confess in my mouth that Jesus is Lord and fully believe in my heart that you raise him up from the dead. Or if you are the one who is experiencing winter or Sabbath in your faith at this very moment, my dear brothers and sisters, it's about time to apply realization and reignite that faith, reignite that passion, reignite that commitment. Find your way, stepping towards the direction of the Lord again. Find your way, turning back in repentance to the direction of the Lord once again. Father, thank you very much. Thank you for the life of everyone, including the people online, applying self-realization, whatever situation they may be in their faith, in their life. Father, there is substantial grace in mercy. None of us deserve it, yet you have given it anyway. That's why it is called grace. It is an unmerited favor. So Lord, Holy Spirit, come and take your rightful place upon the life of each and every one. Complete the message. Reveal yourself. Reveal your words. Reveal their situation in standing with you. Thank you very much, Lord, that there is such a time as end times. There is such a time as trials and tribulations. Because we know when we do believe that these trials and tribulations, that this end times, O oh God, you will use it, Lord, as a footstool to reveal your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. May God bless you all, church. Let us continue to persevere in faith. Let us continue to desire the Lord. And if the Lord will not come back yet, let us continue to gather again. Amen. May God bless you all.
Jesus be true. God bless you and keep you the whole, whole year through. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to me! Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to come. <laughs> happy birthday to me! Yes, happy birthday to you! Yes! <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I ask as well, yeah, as you pray for me, can I ask uh, Brother Taman and, uh, I don't know, for no reason, so Brother Taman and Sister uh, Abilina, please. Come and pray with uh, Patricia. Okay? I don't know why, but uh, come, come. No, no, just pray. Yeah, okay. Pray with Patricia in the spirit for me as well, yeah? Do you want to hold his hands? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your lovely presence. Thank you, Father, that this is a family. Father, we are part of your huge family worldwide. And Lord, thank you. Thank you for this family. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm not sure when Hector's birthday really is, but Lord, we are celebrating it today. And we are rejoicing with him. We are rejoicing with you, Lord. Lord, thank you for Ephesians 2 verse 10, Lord, that Hector, Pastor Hector, is um, created by you, Lord, for the works that you have ordained for him to walk in. And Lord, here we see, Lord, the work, Lord, that he is working and walking in, Lord, that's been ordained by you, Lord, from the very foundation of time, Father. You knew that you would bring Pastor Hector and his family to this nation, Lord, and this nation needs lovely men and women like Hector. Hector, Lord. So, Father, thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for the, the, the work that you have given Hector to do. Thank you for the strength, Lord. Thank you for the giftings, Lord. Thank you that he hears you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the message he gives, Lord, week by week, Father. And, Lord, I wondered today, Lord, if he sometimes wonders if he's appreciated. And, Lord, we just want to say yes. You appreciate him, Lord, but we appreciate him. And week by week, Lord, as he comes before you and seeks your face and seeks for that word, Lord, of encouragement and direction, we thank you, Lord, and we honor him, Lord. And we ask for your blessing to be upon him, Lord, for the year ahead, Lord, for however many days and weeks and months it may be, Lord, we thank you and we pray, Lord, for the mighty... Filling, refilling of the Holy Spirit for Hector, please, your son, that you will fill him up with all that he needs. Meet every need, Lord, that there will be no anxiety as he's touched on today. We thank you, Lord, that you will meet all his needs according to your riches. And we pray for more abundance for him, Lord, more of you to come into his life and to come out of his life to bless this little congregation here, Lord. And Lord, we, we bless you for what's going to come from this day onwards, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Happy birthday po, Pastor. Oy. May konti pong uh, uh, bigay po ng uh, church members po, uh, Pastor. Hallelujah. Um, can I ask each and everyone uh, the best na may... Again, thank you very much. I, I appreciate you all. No, hindi lamang not only those people who are here, 
And even those people who are not here and those people who that are far and wide, those people who have started with us and are now elsewhere, and all the people that who came and worship with us. And I appreciate you all, my dear brothers and sisters. There is no pastor without you. It's not the other way around. Okay, and I appreciate you all, not only today, not only on Sundays, but in every day. And I thank you very much. I thank the Lord for the lives of all of you, for all the encouragement, for all the love, for all the support in the ministry. And I thank you very much. I thank the Lord that I have or we have the opportunity to um, uh, to honor, to uh, to commemorate the birth in water. But I thank the Lord all the more that as he has allowed that birth in water that gave birth for the opportunity for the Holy Spirit to be birthed as well in me. So maraming maraming salamat po. And once again, if it is not too much, can I ask each and every one of you, my dear brothers and sisters, if you are online as well, I encourage you to join. And can I ask my wife to pray with for me as well, if that's okay? Is that okay? I appreciate the, the prayer from our dear Patricia, uh, Sister Abilina, and Brother Taman. But can I ask my wife to Pray for me as well, and if we can pray with her. Can we please stand up? Amen. Because at least the wife knows whatever it is that the husband prays or whatever it is that she prays for me. If she said that, Lord, uh, allow this person not to be hard-headed anymore, whatever it is that um, uh, she asked uh, ask the Lord, and let's say amen and agreement. Okay? Hallelujah. So, yes, so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We praise you, Lord. We give you thanks, praises, adoration, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We are so grateful that we have a pastor, Father. Uh, my pastor, my husband, and the father of my children, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that uh, his life truly is a blessing, Father God. He is not perfect. He is not perfect, Father God, but through your grace and mercy, he continue. To, um, with his faith, Father God. And we just, uh, it is our prayer, Father God, that you may continue to give him his strength. You may continue to give him the desire in his heart to continue to do your will, continue to do the calling that you have called him, Father God. Continue to do the works, Lord, uh, with your presence, with your guidance and leading, Father God. Lord, we pray that whatever the task, whatever the calling that you have um, called him, Lord, it is our prayer, Father God, that uh, he may be able to do it, Father God, through the help of the Holy Spirit. Lord, whatever um, his shortcomings, whatever the things, Father God, um, uh, things na hindi niya nagagawa, things that he is not able to do, Father, especially, Lord, um, your will, Father God, Lord, it is my prayer, Father God, that continue to guide him, Lord. Continue to give him the knowledge and wisdom and uh, always the fresh revelation to share your words, Father God, to us. And uh, we just pray, Father God, that give him that fruits of the Holy Spirit, Father God. Continue to give him the fruits of, sp of spirit, especially, Father God, the self-control and the patience, Lord. We know that he is loving um, husband, loving pastor, and loving um, father. Uh, we, we just pray, Father God, that you know his heart, Father. The desire of, her, of his heart, Father God, um, though sometimes he is very secretive, but Lord, it is uh, our prayer that um, fulfill that heart's desire, Lord, that is in line with you, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that um, continue to make him grow spiritually, Father God. And whatever the trials, the things that will come, 
especially in handling this church, in pastoring this church, Father God. It is my prayer that he will not be shaken and he will not be moved, Father God, because we believe that your power, your glory, and you are our God, Father. And we just pray that it will continue, that glory will continue to um, be, uh, it will continue to show the glory upon his life, Father God. And whatever the things that he will do, he will do it to give you glory, Father God. To, he will do it to give you adoration and praises, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, um, anything Father God, that you want him to change those kind of negativities, Father God, because we believe, Lord, that no one is perfect. But it is uh, our prayer, it is my prayer that continue to teach him to be holy, Father God, for you are holy, Lord. And thank you, Lord. May you continue to guide him, lead him, Father God, and continue to give him strength and the love to do things for you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ano man yung mga pagkakamali niya, ano man yung mga hindi niya nagagawa, Father God, ano man yung mga bagay-bagay na hindi nagugustuhan ng mga ibang tao, Father God. May you impress that in his heart, Lord, to change. May you um, just pour out your blessings upon him, Father God, to be a blessing to others. When it comes to financial it is my prayer, Father God, that, Lord, you are our great provider, that you will provide everything that he needs, Father God, in order to support his family and this church, in order to um, show his love, Father God, to his family and in this church, Lord, and Bless him. Bless him, Father God. And may you continue to give him the humbleness in his heart and the gratefulness in his heart, Father God. And especially, Lord, the joy and love in his heart to continue to serve you no matter what will happen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. May God bless you all.